Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman, for, for the nice introduction, and thank you very much for giving the opportunity to speak on this on this topic. Uh, we heard many excellent talks about uh, the present day's uh, device and the future device like ETA, and this uh, topic addresses actually the devices which will be uh, a step beyond of this. And speaking about the fusion power power plant, as at the moment stays uh, in the requirements and taking the demo uh, fusion reactor as a, uh, a representative uh, example, we may think that we need to face quite a lot of challenges. First, the power plant is expected to generate around two gigawatt of, of, of power for the lifetime of 20,000 pulses and the duration of each pulse is around two hours. This is as a present design. The fusion gain is expected to be 40, and the power load on the first wall will be quite benign, quite quite moderate because of the large gap, which is now uh, presently being uh, uh, expected. But power loads in the diverter will be at, at the range of 10 to 20 megawatt per square meter. Now, uh, to cope with such an amount of the, of the load and the quasi-stationary state operation, we need to have some, something very robust, to have something which has very high melting threshold, something which is actually very uh, difficult to sputter, and uh, maybe something which is not very much activated, and also something which has good thermal conductivity. So we actually had uh, the prime choice at the, at the moment for the plasma facing material is the tungsten. But having into account the different environment, we may ask ourselves what actually expect the materials and maybe other candidates in the fusion power plant. So from the, res uh, from the per performance point of view during the regular power plasma operation, we can have quite a lot of experience for the present day machines. You can uh, see all these effects and uh, these are quite a lot. We can, in principle, have the lectures on any of such a, uh, events, reducing the damage of the materials. And we can put actually a couple of more in addition to what is already mentioned, like the embrittlement during, during the neutron radiation, thermal fatigue during, uh, because of the cyclical loads, recrystallization while going to the high temperature. And um, in addition, activation and transmutation because of the much higher uh, neutral, neutron influences, which are going to happen in the fusion power, power plant. Uh, this is the half of the problem, I would say. The rest is that the most of these of this processes actually are going to, to happen during the long uh, operation simultaneously, and there are no conventional materials which can actually accommodate with such, a, such a challenges. Putting a bit on top of it, so we will have uh, to operate in the, in the fusion power plant in a very rush neutron environment, and this guy is going to, 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 to uh, cause quite a lot of problems. Here we can see the, the fluxes of the neutrons, the function of energy on the different locations of projected power plants. And we can see that from this graph, it is uh, that uh, on the first wall armor, we can expect a neutron flux up to the 10 to the 14 newton per square centimeter a second, which is a huge amount if we calculate to our pulse. What will happen with material, it is not only going to suffer from all this uh, events caused by neutr uh, neutrons, as mentioned Tony in, in, in his introductory talk, it is, go is going to, to, to have the transmutation. So after five years of the first fall of ETA, having this, this fluxes, we will not have the pure tungsten as our first wall material, we'll have only 94% and the rest is start to be trans transmutated to the rhenium and osmium and other subsequent isotopes, so it will cause the unprecedented environment for the conventional fusion materials. And this is uh, basically what is going on during the uh, regular operation. Remembering that we are building the power station, this is something which is very, which must be something which is very stable, which is very robust, which delivers the energy to, 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 to the grid. 
and uh, it's, it's, it's going to be, should be very safe. So that means that the safety is the second very important aspect while designing and thinking about, about advanced, about the materials which we can put in the device. And during the regular operation, we of course think about, about the um, tritium inventory in the, in the vacuum vessel and we need to find the uh, ways of the, at least control the tritium, and, uh, the tritium in inventory, if not uh, to govern this, this in inventory. The second uh, important aspect, in the case of improbable but not impossible, severe accident, like imagine the earthquake, we may have very difficult choice. As actually shown here, this is actually one, one of the remaining buildings of the Fukushima power, power station shortly after the accident. So you can see the, uh, the devastation consequences of, of such an accident. What we can actually expect? We can expect several additional difficulties which uh, prevents us or make our life difficult fighting with radioactive materials and dust release from the power station. First, it is no immediate access to the, to, to the water and to the, col to the colant. Um, no electricity, most probably. They destroy difficult logistics of the destruction of the, of, the, of the roads and the lack of manpower, if the manpower at all, if we're not operating this completely remotely. So we don't have that immediate chance to intervene and to encapsulate this, this, this release. In this context, we might think that uh, if should we have a chance, we need to invent something absolutely independent on our reaction of something very passive if we will have a chance to build in, in our material to be operated just in case of accident automatically. Yeah? Um, Again, looking into the, into the all the scope of the of the of the of, of the parameters and assessing different materials from several point of views, we yet found that among others, tungsten is going to be uh, the most suited for the for the purposes of the operation. And the idea was, and the uh, the question was, can we tune up the tungsten to be better to 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 accommodate with such a challenges? And this actually brought us uh, for to the idea of the creating advanced tungsten-based uh, material. It's not us in Europe, but us in, in, in Europe, so this is a European activity. And if we look to the characteristics of the, of the tungsten, the, these are shown here on the six main areas. We can actually notice there are several characteristics which are already quite good, like thermal properties and sputtering resistance, which we put as a green. There are several characteristics which we cannot change. We cannot go against the nature. This is a nuclear activation. We, we cannot suppress this. But there are also several characteristics which we might have a chance to tool something, to put uh, hands on it. First, it is a hydrogen interaction. That means this tritium perme permeation in the, in, the, in, the, in the tungsten. Mechanical properties, especially uh, the extreme brittleness of tungsten at low temperatures actually makes us worry. And oxidation of tungsten from the, from the terms of safety, I will explain this a little bit uh, later in, in the more details. Then if we speak about, this is all was only, let's say, the, about the material. If we think about something which is to be put into the power station, we need to think about the component. And the component has essentially actually three uh, large pillars. Uh, it needs to... Uh, concentrate and is to, to, to simultaneously to uh, address three main directions. It should have the performance during the operation and accident, should guarantee the safety, and, and second, it should be manufactured. So there are three main pillars which we thought in uh, designing the uh, uh, plasma facing components for the future power plant. And this, this three will constitute the rest of my talk. I will concentrate one by one on all these challenges and try to show you what we now have to propose and where we are in all these areas. So starting with the performance issues, as I mentioned, uh, we will have to face the extreme thermal loads uh, almost on a quasi steady state and, and tungsten is uh, extremely brittle. So the uh, first idea was, as mentioned again uh, uh, today in the morning, to, to, to have the fiber reinforced tungsten. So to actually armor the tungsten with, with the fibers. Exactly how we did this for the carbon, 
nobody believes, but it actually goes also the similar way with, with the tungsten. So what is the main philosophy of, of such a, of such a uh, um, fiber reinforcement? We need to dissipate the energy. So the tungsten becomes brittle and breaks because the energy becomes focused in one particular kind of the defect. And then if we crack stars, the energy goes through this channel and breaks finally the tungsten. If we armor this with the with the small fibers, which, which are shown here, there are millimeter length and the diameter of the sub-millimeter range. The energy can be dissipated by, for instance, pulling out of the fibers, plastic deformation of the, of the fibers, so the materials start, start to struggle, so the energy goes out the bridging of the crack, if, if the crack meets the fiber, or deflection of the crack, so we simply contain this energy, allowing the time to perform longer, and maybe to, to, to shut down or uh, to, the, to, to the repair. How this all actually works, we can see from this small slideshow where the impact is introduced to the fi fiber reinforced tungsten. So you can see now the crack starts to propagate, meets the tungsten. Now you see it's deflected, so there are several cracks, so the, the cracks is not propagating, meeting the meeting the, another fiber, it tries to break the, to, to break the fiber, strengths the energy here. So it's a lot of steps in one single propagation which is going to, 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 to stop and prolong the lifetime of the tungsten. If we look to the uh, numbers on, on uh, what, what was just shown. So here there is a force as applied and causing the displacement of the tungsten. And the red here is a conventional tungsten. So we are applying the force to, to the one particular level and tungsten as absolutely brittle, it simply breaks. So there, there, you cannot apply anything else. If we have the first generation of tungsten fiber reinforced uh, composites, which had only the tungsten fibers inside with this so-called strong interface because they were very uh, so solidly built into the tungsten. You can see that first we're already reaching much higher force where it starts to degrade and then it does not degrade till the end. So it really actually then fights here so you can, you can still apply the force until the, uh, the, the fibers are pulling out. And this is the results for the present day advanced uh, tungsten fibers which have this small yttria based interface which was intentionally made loose. So that means that it's, it is a weak interface between the tungsten matrix and the, and the fiber. So you can see we actually achieved double as much, uh, even higher, double as much force which needs to, to, to crack this, this situation. And then you see how long the, the, the fibers actually are competing. And it's still at, the, at, the, at this power, it is still not the end, the material is still, is still finding. So this is actually impressive. In uh, increase of the performance, it, uh, we make, made the tungsten from the conventional tungsten source material pseudoductile. Then, this is one uh, of the concepts which we can offer. Another interesting idea which was, which was put is to put the so-called microstructured tungsten. The idea is behind of this is to substitute the massive polycrystalline tungsten with the set of the needles or the wires, like our columns, which are directly put in a heat sink. So the wires have actually the, the similar size like our fibers, in, in, in fact. And um, the potential advantages of, of, of such a system actually are, are numerous. So the diameter of the wires is smaller than the correct distance after the, after the thermal cycling or thermal shock. So we know this from experience and test it in the parameters. We choose this small and then that means that the crack should happen in different wires so it's not, it should not uh, propagate the, the damage. The second, the wires still have the time and space to expand. So it's kind of micro castellation. So first we need still to struggle to get this crack on top of it. The third, the plasma is going, is going to, to neutralize in, in, the, in the space in between the fibers, possibly providing the neutral, the neutral, additional neutral pressure and making the neutral cushion to have, uh, to have the soft landing for the plasma instead of direct impact on the, on the target plate made of such a material. And uh, yes, we may uh, have the problems with the deuterium retention because we have the more uh, developed surface. And, and, and uh, yes, we may have no such a problems because we have the developed surface which is easy to desorb from the, from, the, from the surface. So these are potential 
uh, advantages of such a, such a thing. So it started, of course, of made from the on knee and made assembly via co copper infiltration. So at the moment, we're now working on the industry close upscalable spool cutting and bonded by copper infiltration and diffusion into the, um, in the, into the steel. The results were presented already, and the one numerous study already made, both on the sputtering resistance, which was almost the same, I mean, the, actually the same for the conventional tungsten and for the microstructured tungsten. The deuterium retention was a bit higher. It was uh, for a microstructured tungsten, but again, with the larger surface, we can desorb. And here, actually, the, the most interesting results, I, I would say, so we actually uh, shot quite a massive load on, 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 this, on, on this tungsten. So we put both of these materials under the same condition and shot two lasers with 0.64 gigawatt per square meter. It was uh, 200,000 pulses of one millisecond, which was uh, examined on both of these of this materials. Uh, and the standard tungsten, which is shown here the, on the uh, left-hand side, you see the cracks, they, they appeared after already a couple of hundreds of the cycles and started to propagate on the cell. And still, after 200,000 cycles, we don't have any detectable damage on the macros structures, which is terrific performance, I, I tell you. These are about the uh, solutions or kind of concepts for the loaded areas for the normal plasma, regular plasma operation of the power station. If we speak about safety, Safety need to be guaranteed during the regular operation, and we are going to uh, address this by providing so-called the permeation barriers. The permeation barriers are, in fact, very thin layers. They are, hal they are half a micron usual thickness barriers of special materials, which does not allow, allow the tritium to penetrate beyond, this, uh, beyond these layers. And um, there was... Um, the, Characteristic of these layers, the, uh, the effectiveness of these layers is actually um, can be described by so-called tritium permeation reduction factor, which is in fact ratio of the ambient pressure to the pressure be behind this uh, behind this uh, this barrier. There were a lot of research made in several European associations and also in in in, in Ulich with different materials with alumina, erbia, to see. And in all of these studies, in fact, we ended up with the ECHA, which has a very benign uh, neutral, uh, neutron activation behavior compared to other competitors. And uh, there are several strategies which how we can put the such layers. Uh, they all put by uh, magnetron deposition, which is also available at industrial scale in a, a directed mode and hot metallic mode. They are different by... Uh, oxygen content what's, uh, and uh, the morphology of the samples and as tested uh, this is basically the illustration of this, of, this, of this performance if we have the high concentration size and have the uh, tritium barrier here we need to have much lower here and this is the effectiveness as shown as an input pressure of deuterium, of deuterium up to one bar, which is unrealistically high, and one can see that Eurofer, the basic steel, already have, has something like 10 to, 10, 10 to the minus 5, uh, very high uh, efficiency of uh, not allowing tritium to go in. But even the first, uh, uh, first the worst um, permeation barrier already resulted in two orders of magnitude suppre suppression of tritium in addition to the normal uh, steel. And with the hot metallic mode, we achieved already 1,000 times of suppression of the tritium. Now, the question is with, about this tritium. It is bad if the, if the, if the, if the, if the tritium is actually accumulated in the, in the structural components. However, from the safety point of view and licensing point of view, it is not as bad because we know where the tritium is. So the people want to have, let's say, the location. It, it becomes really bad if tritium goes to the cooling channel, then providing all kind of the tritium acti activated corrosion starting to, to vaporize and, and going through the micro leaks, which are uh, essentially not detectable. So these guys can be put into the, in, into the interface and of the cooling channels to, to, to have this, this passive defense. Now going to the safety in, in the course of the accident. 
In the course of the accident, unlike in the present machines and unlike in the ETHOS, we will have additional problem because of the neutrons. If this, should this accident happen, we'll have, unfortunately, um, such an event that we may face the loss of coolant accident and air ingress into the vessel. So suppose the vessel is opened. Under the neutron loss, in the loss of coolants, we will have uncontrolled, so we will lose the heat sink, so we cannot actually attenuate the nuclear decay heating. The nuclear decay heating of the first wall in the DEMA will rocket uh, the temperature of the plasma facing components shortly after the accident, at around a couple of hours, at the temperature of 1000 degrees C and higher. And this temperature will remain, according to the modeling, for several months. So what will happen, in fact, with, with our tungsten at, the, at this temperature? You cannot imagine, but such a heavy material, okay, it will oxidize very actively, but aeros oxide of the tungsten is volatile. So it produces the volatile aerosol, which will be evaporated, sublimated, in fact, sublimated into the atmosphere with the rates, depending on the assessments, from 10 to 150 kilograms an hour essentially uh, sublimating the first wall into the atmosphere of the radioactive neutron activated tungsten. This is actually what nobody wants to have. So therefore, the, another idea, which was actually proposed by, by uh, Koch and Bolt in, 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 in Garshen initially, it is so-called self-persuading, and we call this in Ulich smart alloy. What is the idea behind it? It is to alloy the tungsten with specific elements which will make this material reacting depending on the conditions. So during the normal plasma operation, the lighter alloying elements will be sputtered by the plasma, uh, plasma particles, leaving the pure tungsten surface uh, towards, towards the face in the plasma. This is exactly what the plasma wants to have there. Low sputtering rate, low tritium retention, and uh, all these advantages of the, of the tungsten. However, in case of the accident, if we go for the high, high temperature, we will lose this couple of, of nanometers. This is a very thin layer of depleted tungsten, so we cannot do that much about this. But we will lose this, these layers, but we still have the alloying elements, which are chromium and yttrium inside. These elements have the higher affinity to the, to, to the oxygen. They will create their own excites much faster, and they will actually cover the tungsten, preventing this A from oxidation and then from subsequent uh, sublimation. So this is the idea of the passive uh, component for the, for, the, for the power plant. Now, um, we started this something like 2013, and uh, you can see actually where we go um, here. Um, this is the results of the test of the tungsten and the advanced smart alloy in the accidental condition. So this, uh, this material was subjected to the exposure of the humid air put being at the 1000 degrees C and put to the, towards, this, uh, to, towards this material. Both of the tungsten and smart alloy. What will happen with tungsten? It will start, it will start to, to oxidize. It will increase the mass and it, it will become thicker. And this is the mass change as a function of days as corresponding to the accident in the, in the, in the power station. So this is the days after the accident in DEMA. So what will happen with, with the tungsten? It will simply increase the mass like a rocket on, on, on the top. Actually, this excess is, 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 is going up to the 150. I simply didn't show in order to let you see uh, everything. And this is the smart alloy ma ma mass gain. So it, it's, it's very benign, even if we cut here the, 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 the scale. But this is not really, at the moment, uh, the last problem that, I mean, tungsten can oxidize, it, but it, I mean, this, this will bring the mass, this will destroy uh, some mechanical stuff, but it will not lead to the re release. The, Oxidation as such is not that dangerous. The sublimation is dangerous because as soon as it is oxidized, it starts to, to, to create this aerosol. Sublimation, is in, in, in fact, it happens in parallel to the, to the oxidation, but it is much weaker. So the, the sublimation rates are much uh, slower than the mass increase because of the oxidation. So therefore, that we can measure, it was actually pioneered also here, the sublimation directly. The tungsten sublimation uh, lays at this range, so it sublimates quite massively yet. And this is the sublimation of the smart alloy. 
So you basically barely see it close to the zero on a scale of 10 days of the really robust demo-like accident at 70 degrees humidity starting feeding at 40 degrees C on the 1000 degrees C hot component. I cheated you a little bit. We can measure only tungsten sublimation. At these temperatures also chromium start to sublimate, but to uh, let's say to have the idea, we oxidize chromium and sublimate it, the pure chromium. So even if we cannot measure chromium sublimation, it will not be beyond this point. So this is really, let's say, what the component, uh, how the component behaves during the accidental conditions. To illustrate, these are all ni nice numbers. We have 40-fold suppression of sublimation and oxidation is suppressed in fact actually 10,000 times. Um, if we look with eyes, what will happen? So this is the identical conditions, only 10 hours of the exposure in the oxidizing atmosphere. So if, if, if you look to the tungsten block from the beginning of the exposure, it looks like this. After 10 hours, in accidental conditions, the conventional tungsten eats a grate, looks like this. So, um, so you see, the, 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 the shape is completely lost. It actually, the power was as such, it's, you actually even opened the hook. So this is the conventional tungsten. If we look to the smart alloy from the beginning, looking the same like tungsten, and looking after the 10 hours as well, it, it becomes black. If you wrap this using the, the sandpaper, it will be metallic behind of it because it is only something like 10 micrometers of this oxide on top of it. So this is the about the performance under the accidental conditions. But since these materials are also expected to be the plasma facing materials, we need to, t we, we need to test this under the plasma facing conditions. And this is what we are doing in, in several linear simulators because they are actually allowing us to uh, approach the uh, uh, f uh, fluxes which were expected. So these are actually the grouped results from the linear plasma simulator PSI-2 in Ulich and the exposure in the world's most uh, powerful pl plasma simulator Magnum PSI. Actually very new results from May 2019 uh, and you are one of the first actually who see this, uh, this results. What we can, um, in several of our experiments in PSI-2, we put all the materials pair by pair uh, to have the same conditions. And in Magnum PSI, we simply repeated the experiments for the pure iterate tungsten and then for smart alloy. And then again, pure iterate tungsten and smart alloy. What we can expect, and these are the results of the modeling, because of different density of the, of the, of the smart alloy, should it be removed, we can expect such a ratio of the removed mass during this patterning. And these are the results of the mass loss as a function, a recalculated function of demo operation day. So with uh, Magnum PSI, we can, uh, we can uh, almost approach one month of the demo operation in, on, on the fluids. And you can see, okay, for till, till five days of the, of the operation, the ratio is, is uh, still uh, kind of much, much higher for the, for, the, for, the, for, the, for the tungsten, which are in fact also uh, due to the large uncertainties in, in this operation. For instance, this operation, uh, this, this exposure was only 10 minutes. But if we go from 5, uh, 10, 20 days, look at these numbers of the ratio of removed, of, of, of the removed materials. They are pretty much the same, like modeled. That means, well, let's say two things. First, that we have the higher mass loss for the pure tungsten, which is a uh, reference material and which is gray than the green. And the second, we do not have any thermally activated diffusion of chromium, which is depleting our materials. This was our concern during these studies, that to see that by the accident, we have enough passivating materials in the bulk. So we're not, we're not losing this. So there is no additional ma ma mass change in, in this sense the materials work as we wanted, as we pre, uh, pre predicted. And this is very good re results. Now, for, the, for, for, for those who try to read, it is actually yeah, the, for, for the help of, of this and some not understandable word. Having all these quite scenic concepts, you may ask the question, you'll be absolutely right, the materials are very different. How are we going to put them all together? Um, and for this, we are working on the specific topic in, uh, for creation of the, of the components, so-called joints. Uh, 
if we look to the tungsten as a reference material and, and structural components, we can see actually how different they are. That thermal elongation of the of the steel is three times larger than that of tungsten. On the opposite, the heat conductivity is three times better for tungsten. I can continue this, this graph till, till, till the floor. They will all be different from but the factor of two or three in all various directions. So the question is, we cannot operate, we cannot simply put this material and to, to, to think that everything will work. So we need to, to have the smoothing joining interfaces and this is what, what is behind of so-called functionally graded materials. In order to substitute one material with another, but on a gradual basis, what we are doing with our colleagues with, with Bochum, using the electro discharge sintering. So you can see here, this is a pure, this is a pure steel, and here it is 25 volume percent of tungsten, 50 and 75 volume per, per percent of tungsten in, in the scale of the sub -milli millimeter put very precisely actually uh, and controlled qu quite good. So this fu functional graded material is now already created and used in the interface and now uh, under the thermal study. But this is, okay, frontiers. We just started this activity. Another thing which was today mentioned uh, is to use the really the fantastic, just very new techniques of additive manufacturing. Of course, it is absolutely their idea on the such a different material, but should it work, we may try to get the component completely at, 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 at one technological cycle. Of course, we are, I mean, very far from it, but we just started by selective laser melting, putting the steel and the tungsten to, to, just to create this functional graded material by addition. Um, additive manufacturing. These are the first results showing the uh, agglomerates of, of, of tungsten. Uh, speaking about the interface, the, uh, the interface, the dense interface uh, uh, achieved, but still the cracks. But these are really the first steps um, where we just started, I think, in the, in the early this, uh, the, this year to put the hands on. Now, Speaking about future, realizing the working prototype, having all these systems, what I, what I just pre presented, it may, war, may look as an example of the Vota prototype on the power station, maybe like this. Putting microstructure tungsten or smart alloy or tungsten fiber reinforced and the plasma loaded part, then followed by a joint to get this on the, plas on, on the structured component. Uh, put the tritium barrier, not to allow tritium to penetrate into the structural material and uh, finalize everything with the heat sink, uh, which has been developed by our partners. Uh, just uniting all these components in, in, in one suite. And this is actually brings me at the moment to the conclusion on the, for, for this. I think, I hope that I uh, was able to convince you that we'll have a very extreme environment in the, in the fusion power plant and this environment will be essentially incompatible with any of the existing conventional materials. And we need to make uh, the advanced components which will join performance, safety and technology. Uh, for plasma loaded part, we can use the try to use the tungsten fiber in four stars and microstructure it. For the less loaded part, as a first wall, we can use the smart, smart alloy. Permeation barriers are going to fight with the treat inventory during the plasma operation, and uh, in case of accident, we can uh, implement the passive so so solution of, of the smart alloy. And at the moment, a lot of work is going to the technology and machinability. Of the, of the components. You can see a lot of developments is going on right now. A lot of open questions, huge amount of open questions are still there. But taking a look to the calendar, now we have 2019 and we're already quite far away on, the, on, on these developments. So it makes me quite confident in the bright future of fusion. Thank you. for this very comprehensive, very optimistic also talk, and there are certainly questions. Thank you for a fascinating talk, but there is one thing you didn't put here, and it is always buggering me when I'm hearing about first iter, then demo. Uh, aren't you going up to, for because you are using some very complicated and rare materials like itrium. Aren't you going at certain point to hit the level of 
the, all the yttrium we have on the planet? Yeah, yes, I mean, uh, thank you first for the, for the good question. Um, this is, of course, um, true in the sense that usage as such, the exotic mater materials uh, should be carefully evaluated, like lithium for, 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 for the breeders and so on. However, in this particular situation, we're using 0.6% of lithium. This is a so-called active element, which is being put in absolutely homeopathic uh, amount. Uh, changing dramatically the chromium reaction. So we are just assisting the chromium reaction to build this passivating layer. Simple binary chromium tungsten does not work. Binary uh, tungsten chromium with a small homeopathic dopant of, of each element. This is a subject of research with scant. 1% is already too much. So being, uh, it, it changed the thing dramatically and actually make the, the layer stable. So at the end of this, uh, we went at the record at 25 days of the constant oxidation. Constant oxidation, we found less than 1% of tungsten containing oxide at the surface. Tungsten containing, it's not even the tungsten oxide, it was tungsten bound with yttrium. So this is what, what this small amount of yttrium oil makes. Uh, I have uh, one question because uh, I see your results are quite impressive, but the, the point is mm, uh, the ta transmutation because I am a bit aware, uh, worried that uh, after some uh, time of operation the smart alloy may become not so smart. Yes. Uh, we work on this, I cannot show all this, uh, let's say, the, the progress first at the present design of DEMO. One can criticize, but we, I mean, this is the reality. The lifetime of the first wall is five years. That's why I shown the results for five years. Then it is very thin first wall. It is only three millimeter. We cannot go higher, otherwise it will be too high uh, nuclear heating, even with the heat, heat sink. So we cannot uh, have the structural material which holds this temperature. Uh, in these five years, I would not say nothing special will happen, but the, the things which happen, we kind of good predicting. And there is a feedback pro, uh, package which is in Oxford and the, your colleagues in Warsaw University of Technology working on chemical stability and the phase stability of, of such a system. So we have actually modeling which predicts with the certainty of the months what is going to happen. The, another aspect, uh, tungsten will transmute, but it will to, to transmute it to the materials which are adjacent on the periodic table. So that means that the chemistry, luckily, will not change that much. Chromium as well. The point is of choosing chromium, yttrium, and tungsten was the similar activation and decay time. They all have the decay time around, around 100 years. So they all are quite similar to, to each other. There is another, I mean, there is a small concern because of the osmium, because osmium may cause the segregation, but having to, to look into the amount of osmium, it's not reaching the critical concentration to trigger this within five years. Thank you for a very interesting talk. I was just wondering for the additive manufacturing part, have you come up against any current technical limitations of additive manufacturing used for metals? Because from what I understand, they're a bit behind the other standard techniques for, for uh, additive manufacturing for other materials. And do you think you can eventually apply it to large scale uh, surfaces? Um, well, I mean, first to, to be absolutely candid, I just, put this slide because it is, we started and this is so sexy at the moment, yeah, because the, and this is on tungsten. Yeah. The additive manufacturing was made, uh, let's say, in the low, lower melting materials. This, this is the first study on the, for the, for, 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 uh, for the tungsten. Um, 
about large components, I'm not that sure because, because uh, we are thinking about ITA, it has a quite limited uh, size of beryllium crystallization, tungsten crystallization, which is one centimeter times three centimeters. So we're thinking about uh, sm uh, small blocks. You cannot not crystallate because of the risk of the non homogeneous lo loads. So the sizes are quite finite. Um, I would rather actually, uh, and with, with, with these sizes, uh, <coughs> Present additive manufacturing is all already coping. Let's say four centimeters is not problem. The problem is to put tungsten on the, on, on, on the urethra to have this in a controlled manner. This is long way to go. What was, I would say, I mean, for us, in, inspiring, um, these uh, tungsten alloys, these are not the thin films deposited by uh, Magnetron deposition. These are in industrial scale produced for field assisted sintra technology, which are available in centimeters of sizes. So at the moment we have two centimeters, two, I'm two centimeters, but we already have a facility which makes four by four, and another facility which goes 10 by 10. With 10 by 10, we're already covering all expected sizes, actually, what we can assume. And we can go higher because it's now on high demand. I have a question, uh, uh, not directly related to your talk, but uh, about tungsten. Uh, so, as you know, in Vanderstein, no, no <laughs> at Vanderstein 7X, we want to also exchange the carbon to the tungsten in future. However, our worry is that the tungsten is just too heavy for uh, for the structure. So, you, do you have any suggestions how to reduce the weight of tungsten? I mean, at the moment, what we what we dis discussed uh, that was a coated solution, which is not as heavy, and the bulk solution, it is around one millimeter thick, which actually makes me concern on the lifetime. So, therefore, at the moment, I mean, the discussion st stopped at, at the end that we will not go for the bulk solution. We will go to the bulk parts on the loaded for sure parts and look with which parts can become damaged and locally substitute them. Loaded part are also on the top of the machine. And, uh, yes, 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 yes. I forgot to switch it. Uh, on permeation barriers, uh, uh, you, you show here very optimistic results. How, let's say, durable are these uh, layers, again, under irradiation? And uh, uh, this is probably too early to talk about reproducibility in, in manufacture. I mean, uh, with the irradiation, cannot uh, tell that much because uh, these guys are scheduled to number of radiation campaigns. So they actually produce the, 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 this layers to be put into the reactor mm -hmm. in various reactors. In fact, I cannot uh, tell that much. But with respect to the, I mean, we need to remember that this is only for this case only 500 nanometers, and this this will put with magnetron deposition. Let's say within minutes and very reproducible. So we meanwhile uh, we made uh, several analyses, ICPOES and GGCOES, and many of the things in RFA. Uh, the the homogeneity of the, of the of the and the concentrations were within one to five percent. It was really really very good. Okay. Thank you very much. We thank.